Um, as, as Hal loads up, there, as I mentioned yesterday, we would really welcome at least two, two outcomes from this workshop besides all our networking and uh, communication and uh, technology transfer. Um, one of those is, is maybe just kind of a status, a summary of status as, as we perceive it to be from this workshop as far as where we are as far as the development of the ET mapping technology, uh, status on how well are we supported by the satellite imagery that we need, feel we need. Uh, thirdly, where are we at as far as introducing this technology more and more into the legal uh, side of uh, water usage and management. Um, so uh, Tony uh, will, and then the second product is uh, we would welcome having buy-in from most of you uh, to on a statement that we would like to have coming from this workshop comprised of you know ET practitioners from various states various interests, various types of government and private practice, but a, a kind of a concerted uh, focus statement on where we would like to see Landsat uh, support um, from uh, Congress. Uh, we know from past, as you've heard us say, that uh, our voice really does count substantially in Congress, uh, especially with the conservative side of Congress. They, those guys they're convinced of the need, but they, they, they need justification to spend money. And, uh, I mean, on both sides of the aisle need justification to spend the money. So we've got to help them as, as much as we can. Okay, so uh, I like, I've got three slides here uh, kind of summarizing what I think we've heard. Uh, but I sure don't want to be dictating to you what the summary should be. So I hope you feel free to... Uh, offer uh, any uh, suggestions to, to modify this or morph it, uh, or you feel free to email us afterwards. We'll, we'll email this around and then uh, take, take your input after. Uh, Steve? Okay, can, can you write that down? That would be a nice probably footnote to have. However, I think we will always see legal proceedings. That's just humanity uh, does that. Okay, uh, Hal, can you advance to the next slide? Or I guess I can, okay. Okay, all right, I've got uh, three pages. Uh, let's just read these and you know, I don't know if we want to show have a show of hands or what, but uh, I, I think we've heard that you know ET mapping by remote sensing, whatever method used, is already being used uh, in water rights hearings and determinations to, to some degree. I mean, it's, it's just getting started, but uh, uh, there is docu documented usage to determine uh, injury amongst parties uh, to help settle lawsuits uh, for, for some uh, deliberations at the, the state water resources level on uh, curtailment. Uh, the A and B example that Bill Kramer talked about is, is one such case, uh, primarily in a prior appropriation type of environment. Um, ET mapping is being used to substantiate past water consumption. We've seen that as a, a, an extremely valuable use of the Landsat archive. Um, and then development and calibration of other types of processes, daily uh, soil water balance models, uh, hydrologic groundwater models, are, are uh, very receptive to the use of spatial mapping by ET for calibration. And then those uh, can all be used in uh, you know, hearings and findings, planning, and policy setting. But I think we need to make it clear that behind those is, is uh, highly accurate uh, ET mapping is an important component behind those models. Uh, I, I think I hear, and please correct us, and I'm speaking on behalf of all the developers and of, of uh, mapping, that the confidence in energy balance-based ET mapping is, is uh, good in support of legal decisions. Does that sound okay to say? 
I, I think we're, we hear some pretty good confidence. Uh, maybe that's naive. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yes? Yes, uh, that's a great question. The, 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 you know, our, where's that confidence at, and at which scale, the size of the parties, and um, I, I'm not sure how to answer that. I, 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 I think maybe it's good for now, just since this is a message we want to kind of send to Congress, just to just keep it general, perhaps, just say, you know, confidence is good in the technology and how it's used and where it's used. Uh, is de definitely going to mandate the degree of, of accuracy and such. Dave? Uh, Rick, to flesh that out, I'd, I'd like to ask Gabriel, you're, you've done some work on, on this from a GS standpoint. Where, where does the GS stand with this topic? Or is he outside? By the way, Steve, would you mind just writing down a few notes to maybe remind me to include some of these thoughts? Um, and then, excuse me, yes, Bryce. Yeah, as this whole thing evolves, yeah, clearly. Yeah, Dave? Yes, Gabriel, your, your thank you. The, the question came up about confidence in, in this kind of technology from the state side and from the federal government side. And you've been working on this relative to the USGS. And the question is, where, where does the GS stand relative to confidence in this technology for these, these kinds of determinations, in your view? Well, one thing that we could add to that confidence point, uh, perhaps, is that our perception is that to date there is good buy-in to remote sensing technology and, and estimation of ET at, at all levels of government, federal level, state level, regional level, uh, sub-state level, and, and by the private uh, you know, consulting community. There seems to be 
uh, good buy-in, that, that this is a, a worthwhile technology. The Landsat Science Team? Yes, I, I think you could describe it as an advisory. No? Uh, science, science advisory? The advisory has very specific narrow meaning with the federal government itself. Does Landsat Science Team, which is the science team, does that mean that the Okay, thanks, Tom. So, Okay. You know, no, this is this is a summary of this workshop, but yeah, down the road, definitely that should be a part of our strategy is to get as many letters of endorsement and, and confidence and encouragement as as we can. Okay. Uh, Yeah, we, we plan to definitely run this by the all, all of the participants here. Uh, but yeah, it'd, it'd be nice if, if I, I invite you to add any anecdotal uh, descriptions of, of where this technology has been used. You know, the more we mention applications, you know, something that we have talked about somewhat, but I, I, I would encourage all of us to consider how we can frame it better. And that's the show. You know, we've been talking about how the use of this technology helps make the process more uh, transparent, more uh, uh, clear, more efficient, um, you know, on an operational level within government, within the legal system. But something we should draw uh, a better summary on and, and quantify is how does this really help economic efficiency? How does this help grow businesses? And, you know, we've talked a little bit about what would it be like if we had a four-day return time on Landsat. So you could just pick and choose the image you, really you wanted. Uh, there's no question that you'll get an ET product and you won't have to work hard for it. If it's cloudy, you just go on to the next four-day image. You get on with life. I can imagine just uh, hundreds of consulting firms that would take on ET mapping as part of their portfolio simply because it's straightforward to do. Uh, the type of automation that Charles is describing would be so much more straightforward. So I, I wish that we could describe, and, and this is what Congress needs to hear, is that there's a huge community and of, of uh, people wanting to add value and create businesses all around this technology if we just facilitate that with satellite support. You know, would we have a multi-billion dollar Google if there hadn't been an internet? No. You know, how, how can we have a huge industry of water trading? And somebody mentioned the other day that, you know, transfer of water and, uh, you know, to the better economic good can only happen if you've got clear information on consumption and where it's used and, and when. So there, there's a whole huge industry out there and economy that if we could describe that, I think it would just help so much with decision making in regard to satellite support. Anyway, did, 
Does that make sense? Does that seem reasonable? But that's a tough one because it's, it's a little bit speculative. Yeah? Okay, thanks. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think, it, well, there's so much that Landsat is used for and can be used for, and we, and we need to make it clear that ET, like, I think your point is ET is a basis for all these other things, yeah. yeah. Uh, something I won't talk about, but I, I mean, I'd be happy to talk about it offline, is, is, you know, marketing of Landsat itself. And I, rightly or wrongly, have even suggested we give Landsat's kind of some slogans, you know. And somebody, uh, actually a uh, fellow uh, person at uh, Ames Lab with uh, um, Forrest, uh, suggested we rename Landsat as the Satellite to Save Children. <laughs> and so you go up to a Republican uh, senator and you say, you mean you don't support the Satellite to Save Children? You, you don't want to save children? Anyway, you know where that can go. And puppies. And puppies. <laughs> Guinea pigs. All right, uh, second page. Because uh, Tony, in a few minutes, Tony Morse, you're going to be able to bring our statement. Others. Well, yeah, we can wait till this afternoon. But how, how many here will be, how many here now will be here this afternoon? I wonder if we'll lose. Okay, how many won't be here? That would be better. Uh, to the closing? Okay, so we won't lose so many. Okay, so we can post, post full on that. Okay, anyway. Um, okay, second page. And again, we'll route this around and vet it with you guys. And please uh, tear it apart, add, subtract. Uh, if you want to use track changes, that's good. Uh, ET mapping is frustrated by too few fully functioning Landsat satellites. True or false? It's true. It's, I don't know if frustrating is, is a good word, but I, I, it really is frustrating. Uh, and I think we were, I think it's pretty clear from what we've heard, and, and again, I don't want to drive this. Uh, an eight-day return time is considered to be essential or a, a minimum. And then a four-day return time will substantially accelerate adoption and use in legal hearings and operations uh, with substantial economic benefit. Again, if, if it's the, the more satellite images we have, the more accuracy we're going to have in that time integrated water consumption. And that's just going to play into its adoption in, in legal hearings, right? The higher the accuracy, the more confidence we have in it, the more better able we are to defend it. Well, it's one benefit. I think, you know, this summary is kind of in the context of use in legal, legal operations. What? Okay, so there's probably a better way to rephrase that. Bart, you had a...
Oh, I think so, and I think we got a glimpse of that from the Gallo presentation yesterday. You know, it. Uh, you know, Bart's comment is in regard to use of uh, ET from Landsat to support precision agriculture in almost a near, of course, a near real time or real time uh, thing. Definitely, that that's in the future if we have the satellites to support it. Uh, that really wasn't discussed or presented here, so I don't know how much we want to summarize that, but it, it, it's a good note to have. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll do some wordsmithing on this. Yes. Yeah, you know, we, we discuss how best to frame the logic of asking for a four-day return and eight-day return, and, and one can argue that let's ask for four-day return and perhaps we'll at least have a guaranteed eight-day return. Others would say, look, if you ask for four-day return and Congress says, you know, that's impossible or, you know, that, then they'll say, I guess it's no use even trying to do anything if you can't get the four-day return. So it, it, it's, it's challenging to know how to, to frame this. Yeah. Tony? Yeah, thanks, Tony. And a lot of that, I think, will be in the second statement that Tony Morris will present. That that's going to be a statement on specific to Landsat uh, funding and and growth. Yeah. Oh, that, that's a good point. Field, field scale, I think. Yeah, field scale. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, good point. Okay. Uh, and then I, I think a fair statement is, is that we have a strong feeling that the growth and usage, growth of usage of ET mapping at field scale uh, are stifled by the lack of landsat imagery. And maybe these can be a little bit more together. But I, I think we'd see much more growth, wouldn't we, if we uh, were not impeded by clouds. Um, and the way to mitigate for clouds is just to have more opportunity for clear images. I think that's pretty clear. We, we, 
the people that are closest to estimating ET, we see the potential for a huge growth of, of this type of technology if we have the imagery to support it. I think that's a very true statement. Everybody hear that? Okay. Okay. Uh, some, something that should be here, and it's in some other statements we have, but Hal's point is that, well, for one, uh, the lack of certainty of what the future is going to look like as far as availability of Landsat imagery does impede uh, the investment in infrastructure by entities such as the Idaho Department of Water Resources and even agencies at the federal level consulting firms, they're, they're reluctant to invest in developing the ability to utilize this technology or to produce imagery using the technology if they don't have confidence or assurance that they're, they're going to be supported by imagery in the future. Is that okay way to say it? Yeah. Gabriel or Hatem? I, th I think we talked about on the last slide, um, those sub bullets uh, is kind of, I think, saying a little bit that way that, uh, you know, ET mapping does represent value added uh, compared to traditional approaches in terms of uh, time efficiency, spatial information, um, and time efficiency, I guess, translates into, uh, you know, cost of production of information. Yeah, but we, when we, this comes around, please add, add some comments. Uh, just going back to the bottom, uh, a, a statement I think we want to make is, is why Landsat fits where other satellites do not. And, uh, you know, the 30 meter pixel size of Landsat reflected data coupled with 60 to 120 meter thermal pixel size is considered to be maybe we want to say near ideal. And a good compromise, it allows us to view the consumption at the field scale, which is really the most important point. But also, sometimes you can almost get too small of a pixel. We really haven't talked so much about that, but we would not, or at least I would not want to process an uh, image where I had, say, 20 centimeter pixel size. So I saw in between rows of potatoes, for example. You, know, you can imagine it's just too much information. And we're applying, we talked yesterday about one-dimensional models. Those models assume a blended surface. It's a blended boundary layer. So if we start chopping that surface into hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, wet, dry, wet, dry, wet, dry, you know, in between vegetation and such, it's wonderful information. And it tells us how to parameterize our models. But we Probably it's probably too fine of information for driving these models. But we don't need to talk a whole lot about that, but I, I think it's just worthwhile for people that are scrutinizing why Landsat. We, we need to, I think, be quite uh, vocal about how, how use, uh, ideal, near ideal, that uh, pixel size is. Does that sound okay? Um, and then we. This is a little bit like yesterday, uh, morphed it a little bit, but you know, new technology introduced into legal procedures or uh, 
operations that may lead to legal procedures. Uh, we're confident that uh, ET mapping from satellite fits this bill. It's, it's a reasonable and a good approximation of truth. It's peer reviewed, represents uh, techniques that's better than anything else that's reasonable to use and is in common use. Um, you know, it's better than what we're uh, currently using. Uh, talked about the value added. Um, and then uh, just, I guess, a cautionary statement. And we can leave that in or take it out. But I, I think it's good just to make a statement as a workshop here to people that aren't here uh, that there really should be and we hope to see a balance as we evolve this thing between automation but also with good human oversight. We even heard guys like uh, Charles, you're still here, that's just wanting to get this thing actually built into a chip that goes on your iPhone. But even Charles is saying the more he does the coding and makes the applications, the more he realizes that there's that need for the human to still be involved. You know, one Landsat scene is 30 million pixels. Each of those pixels has a little bit different idea and behavior. So, you know, we, we need the human involvement. Yeah, Molly? I, I, I agree. It's, it's important to emphasize the national, that, that a lot of usage is out west, but it's not just a western uh, problem. Good point. Okay, we're at lunch time. Um, any other burning issues or concerns uh, you want to voice in front of the group? Otherwise, we will. I, I believe we have everybody's email address. Make sure that you're confident that we do have everyone's e that your e email address is with us, and uh, and then we'll uh, make sure we get this out to you. Very good. Thank you.